Hey, what's up everybody? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. In this video, we're working on an 06 Ford Escape. I'm putting an alternator in. Book time is like a little over seven hours. I'm hoping I can shed some time off of that because that's just ridiculous. An alternator for seven hours. Give me a break. That's one of Ford's better designs, right? All right, guys, let's get into it. First thing we did was get the car up in the air. Remember, if you have to get it up in the air, use caution, always use jack stands. All right, axle nut is a 32. Once I get it out, I just take a hammer and lightly tap on it because you don't want to jack up the threads just to make sure it's loose. It's loose. Once I get the axle nut off, I usually go to the tie rod end. I use my car to key extractor to get the car to key out. Make sure you go back with a new car to key if you have them. This is a 19. And I always take the tie rod end off because it's just easier to move the control arm back and forth. I'm hoping I don't have to loosen it here. I'm gonna try to cheat a little bit and see can I move it and maybe finagle it out of the way. I'm sure this is gonna be one of them jobs that everything has to go by the book. I think it's crazy they would make you go to this much labor to replace an alternator, or for that matter, any kind of little, any kind of part like that that's wearable. All right, so there's not gonna be any cheating on this, evidently. It's gonna to have to come out all the way. It is not going in. That gummit. The bolts that hold that control arm to the strutter and the nuts that hold that control <laughs> Damn, I'm tongue-tied. The heat's getting to me. These nuts are a 19 also. I know one thing, summer has definitely come. It is hotter than crap. The humidity here in Virginia is like, oh my gosh, through the roof. Humidity is like, say, it's 10 times worse than the heat. I'd rather have a drier heat. You need to go ahead and get the wheel speed sensor out of the way. That was held on with an eight millimeter. I am not taking that out. Oh, heck no. I wonder if I can get it like that. No, just flip it over. That thing is rusted slam in there. Sure as crap, I go to get it out, it's gonna break. So we're gonna leave it like this. It's not stretched or nothing like that. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and pop this axle out. Yo. So the alternator is tucked in right here. There's a plastic shield on here that we gotta get out. It's supposed to be just two screws holding this shield on. Yeah, there's one screw right on the back side here. And there's one right here. So don't make the mistake I just did. I jacked it up, got it all ready to work on it. Thought to myself, damn, I didn't disconnect the battery. Whenever you mess with the alternator, always disconnect the battery. You should disconnect the negative side first, so that way you don't short anything out. But where this positive side is located at, it was just as simple to go right here, be careful and take it off. But if you are at home and you're not experienced, do the negative side. To get that cover off, I think it's an eight millimeter. That's what it is. Looking at my schematic, it said there was another eight millimeter on the back side here. But this looks more like a push clip to me. It's kind of hard to see. So we're gonna reach around back here and kind of feel. Yeah, I believe that's just a push clip. So what I'll do on that one there is I'm just gonna snap it off with a pair of dikes and go back with a new clip. The 
and that's your shield. You can get a better view now of the alternator right here. We'll go ahead and get it up in the air and we'll get that serpentine built off. When you're taking that serpentine belt off, there's a tool you can use. These things are all over Amazon. I mean, you can get them as low as I think I've seen like $9. If you don't have one, probably should get one, especially if you like to do a lot of work at home yourself. After you get this far, there's one bolt that holds an air duct on, there's one nut that holds the battery wire on, and there's one connector right there that you gotta take off. All right, just get up there with eight millimeter, a little ratchet and go to town. All right, so I lied. I'm, a, I'm just a liar. <laughs> I went and got an eight millimeter swivel head on my quarter inch drive. Get my electric ratchet on it. And just like that, we're out. Same thing with that. If you do a lot of mechanic work at home, these swivel heads on the quarter inch drive set, they, they're just freaking awesome. They come in handy so much. Because I got fat hands, I'm gonna get a magnet and get the boat out. To get the battery wire off, it's held on with a, I think a 10 millimeter. And I switched to, I got a snap on this, I call it a gooseneck. It's got a nice long stretch to it with a narrow base here and a swivel head, 10 millimeter. And that way I can get on there and just kinda go like that and she's off. I'm sure if you're at home and you don't have those kind of tools, you can use a regular extension on a swivel head or something and get it off that way. So you get the connector out, get a tool like that, it's a little pick tool, go up in behind it, you can get it up in there, push it in and pop it out. Just like that. So that air duct bolt I took out, it's like right in line with the nut that's got to come off next and it's on the top side of the alternator. You got to kind of pop that air duct off and I think the easiest way to do it is going to go up with a long straight screwdriver and just kind of knock it off. I'm hoping, I think I got it out of the way enough. This is the setup I'm going to use to get that upper nut off. It's a swivel head deep well. It's a 15 mil and with a good extension on it. We're gonna go up through the bottom side and get it off this way. Um, again, I apologize for the view. There's not much of a view, but I'm trying to narrate the best I can. Well, where'd the nut go? All right, we did get the nut off, but it dropped somewhere up there. So now I gotta hunt a nut down. That's why every mechanic has a good old handy magnet available. <laughs> also available on Amazon. That's my sales pitch for the day. The, it's an inverted Torx. It's, it's an E8 that's going to get this stud out. And hopefully it'll come out without a lot of aggravation. And it seems to be doing it. You know, I've um, been on tech support for about 20 minutes with GoPro. That's been the only camera I've ever used, basically. I've had the first one that originally came out, game when they first built the things. And this, I have the 10 now. This camera, because it's small and it gets into areas, this camera does nothing but overheat and give me problems. It is the worst camera I have ever, ever owned. If anybody has any ideas about something other than a GoPro that is decent, that can get in little spots like this, somebody let me know. I am willing to, try anything I, and because tech support said there's nothing they can do about it you think i think between the media mod the gopro and all the accessories i've got almost 800 dollars in this camera i mean damn i you know i've got a i've got a canon camera but I, I can't get it in these little spots like this came out pretty easy actually. But that's your inverted torx right there that you gotta get an E8 on. The bottom two bolts are a 15, and this is the setup that I'm going with. Just a long ratchet, deep well socket, and a medium size extension. And what I'm gonna do first is go in there and just break it loose. Then hopefully I can get the electric ratchet in there to kind of zip it out all the way. That is the game plan. We'll be able to hit with the electric ratchet and we'll kind of hopefully zip them out.
One. And two. Now, the fun part. We're gonna try to finagle it out through this hole right here. So in order for that to come out here, you gotta get the wiring out of the way. And believe it or not, there's an air duct that's bolted to the back of the uh, alternator that you gotta get the three bolts, take them off, and take the air duct off. We'll unbolt this right here and get it out of the way. Well, thought it was an eight mil. And just you get this bracket and you'll end up moving it out of the way just to give you a little bit more space i think the biggest thing is going to be uh rotating that sucker around to get the three bolts off for that air duct all right so looking at the alternator this is the air duct there are three little nuts one here one up here and one right here and you have to play with that alternator to get it into a certain spot so you can get a i'm gonna put my electric ratchet on it to get that air duct out right here but you you gotta admit i mean this is like the stupidest thing i've ever seen i would love to meet the guy who engineered this and um just to i'd have, love to have a conversation with him to see what kind of common sense he's got he's probably smart as shit on books but doesn't have a lick of common sense I just called the phone with tech support again they called me back they're telling me if i pay them x number of dollars they'll just send me another camera i'm going and i told them i said this has been having the same issue since day one of purchase i'll tell you what i definitely need to find another camera Angle to get the bitch out. Come on. So basically, you got to keep rotating it until you find the right position. And once you do, it's supposed to come out with ease, which I think is a crock of shit, but anyway. Alright, I was talking to my brother. We're going to try to zip off the pulley here. See, can I get any extra space out of it? Because it is definitely not coming the other way. It's, I'm not having any luck should I say, but hopefully that'll give us a little more clearance. You need, need much, just a little bit, you know? Yeah, this wire, this wire has got me, believe it or not. Oh, oh dude, we're like right there. That wire and that pulley, I think, can be the trick. Taking that pulley off and moving that wire was the deal. That's the easiest way, take that pulley off, and don't be hard headed like me and not move that wire in time. But that should have been moved earlier too. So we're gonna price out the difference between an aftermarket and a new. Give the customer the choice. You know my opinion on an aftermarket. It's aftermarket crap is what it is. Sometime back on a Ford 500, I'll put that video in the link down below or right up here, one of the two places. And um, I did a job five times. They kept sending me aftermarket crap. Finally, I told the customer, you're gonna come off the money. We're gonna have to go with a new put a one from the Ford factory in there and didn't have any issues at all. All right, check the prices, call the customer. All right, we just got the alternator in. We went with the one from the dealer, the factory one. It was only like $50 more. After the guy left though, look what I was noticing. Looked like it had been dropped. So I'm gonna have another one sent out because this is a good possibility that if it was dropped, that shaft, you know, could be a little bent in there could have some bearing noise and this job is such a pain in the butt to do i don't want to do it twice all right alternator number two from the dealer this one looks pretty good i don't see any issues with this i just felt uncomfortable sticking that one in there you know because my luck i'd put it in and because where they dropped it it could mess the bearing up or something then i wouldn't know till i got it installed being cautious that's all 
All right, let's get it in. Make sure when you're going back, you gotta put this little tube in there first that kind of keeps the alternator cool. You know, in looking at this job, I was hoping to you know, come up with a shortcut to help you guys out if you're doing it at home or something, but I think the only shortcut in a job like this is just having experience. They call for like a little over seven hours, like I said earlier, but my total time, and this is probably gonna be somewhere about three and a half hours maybe, and that's only because I have experience doing it. There is no real shortcut in this, so if you're at home doing it, just be patient and you know plan to make a day of it how's that sound all right let's go ahead slide this up in there just stick it anywhere for right now just in anywhere out of the way i know i took off the pulley taking it out but i don't really think you need to it was just for some reason fighting me a little bit so i zipped it off and made it a little bit easier you're supposed to be able to slide it in without taking that pulley off Again, I've, I've had luck doing it. It's just sometimes it's one of them things, you know. So all said and done, I went ahead and took off the pulley again because I, I didn't see an easier way to, to get it in, to be honest with you. It just goes in so much easier. I don't even know if the directions say take it off or not. I didn't even look. So now we got to go back here, reach in and get the um, this vent tube that cools down the alternator. Go ahead and get it put on. I'm pretty sure you guys can't see what I'm doing, but but we can at least have a good conversation while I'm doing it, right? I'm lining up the, the yimmy yammer. We'll call it a yimmy yammer. All right, after you get the little tube, in, after you get that tube in place, don't forget your little three nuts that's gotta go on there. This is the stupidest fucking design I've ever seen. We're out back crushing some cars today and uh, amazing how many junk cars you accumulate over the years we're actually a salvage yard here also we've been a salvage yard for forever uh probably 86 years and um every so many years we go back out there and clean all the cars up and just kind of start throwing stuff away making it look good and uh we got a company back there doing it now we're not doing it ourselves this year it's a lot easier it's a lot easier Come on, get this bitch flipped around. I know you'll flip, because I flipped you taking you out. All right, once you get it flipped around, don't forget to put the little pulley back on. It's easier to do it this way than it is when you get it up in there. And we're going back with our factory specs on this. They're German, they're just good and tight. Good to go, ain't going nowhere. If I had to guess, I'm guessing so many, so many pounds. Big thing is you can't see jack shit up in behind here that's what gets you all right once you get it in place start putting the bottom bolts in kind of for alignment reasons because the back one is you have to go in from the bottom underneath the vehicle to get it and it's just easier if you kind of get these here and get them secured up just a little bit i'm not doing too bad i've only had a little bit of cussing so far like this motherfucker won't go in right here and these bitches keep getting in the fucking way up here Oh my God, you dumb motherfuckers, just get out of the fucking way. So once I got this bolt started a little bit, I'm gonna get electric ratchet, just snug it up just a little bit, get a little bit closer, take a little pressure off it. Just like that. That way it's up closer and you still have the ability to move it around a little bit just to wiggle this bottom one in on this side. We are just snug enough. All right, once you get to that point, I'm gonna raise it up and then we're gonna snake this one back in, the bottom one right here. Aren't we having fun? So now we're going back with the stud. That's what my wife calls me. You're a stud. So I know, baby. All right. Got the stud in, let's get the nut on there. Try and get it so you can see. So don't make the rookie, don't make the rookie, don't make the rookie mistake I just did. This harness has to come on the back side here. 
and between this and the metal bracket because it goes right here it's I can't get them both through at the same time so I need to take this bracket off and feed it through and then put the bracket back on just make sure your wires are in the right place it's the moral of the story so we all know messing with older cars you end up there's clips and things that break on it this is your oxygen sensor and we don't want to get it tangled up in the shaft so make sure if you come across anything like this get a wire tie get it out of the way make sure it's going to be secure and not hitting that drive shaft we don't want any kind of problems down the road and we should be good just like that all right one of the few things left to do is we're going to go ahead and put the drive belt on and the knuckle assembly you don't need to see me do that the next time you see me we'll be testing the alternator to make sure it's working keep your fingers crossed we did go with a brand new one so I wouldn't have any BS, but again, you never know. All right, catch in a bit. So it's a good thing I cut the camera off when I did. I dropped that piece of vent tube behind the engine here and I couldn't get my hands on it. I was cursing and smashing shit. My brother came over and helped me out. He went from the top side and I went from the bottom side and together we were able to get it out. But the full wheel drive like this, or they're all wheel drive, you just can't, there's nowhere to put your fucking hands. End of story. All right, let's go ahead and test and see if it works. do a full system test oh man you dog do a full scan on it start with the battery come on bitch god i hate these three times the charm right system scan next not doing any kind of uh, thing it's a top post battery automotive it's a regular battery Cold cranking amps. It was a 575, I think it was. This is a heat. This is a tester here for temperature. You put it right two inches above it. Hit the S button. Good recharge. You want to do that? Let me start the engine real quick. I don't want to move it because every time I touch it, they keep cutting off. Not sure why. All right. Is it reading anything? They mess up again? I don't know. It keeps messing up tight. I'm wondering, is it this? Because it was a minute ago I had it and I couldn't get it to do anything. I know it's charging 13. I just put the thing on here. Let me start it real quick. Let me get inside. Ready? Do I need to rev it up? Well, before we even go past the first stage with a re, he, he's gone. Uh, oh, you're good. So without a load, you're at 13.7. With a load, you're at 14.6. Uh, we want English. We're going to print out a result, and we look at it that way also because the whole test goes through the battery, the cranking, and the alternator. It does all three things. Does the battery tested good? Just needs a recharge. That's because the alternator has been bad. The uh, starter, check normal, was only had 107 amps on the start, but the volts were 10.73, so that's fine. That's within range. And the charging system now has no problems. Good fucking thing, because I'm not doing this job twice. All right, that is it for this video. My only tip for this job is, this is probably something I would recommend you try to do at home yourself. If you went home and you spent 10 hours doing it on a weekend, Think of the labor that you'll save. It's a seven and a half hour job. It took me about four and a half hours. It might take you guys about five. You know, it could take one of you guys less than me, you know. Um, 
But think about it, they're gonna charge you seven and a half hours labor. And around here, some of the rates are 135 an hour. That's a lot of dough. Well, that's my tip for the day. Appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Catch you later.